Hello guys, welcome back to SR Technologies. Today we are going to discuss SQL to PySpark series. In the previous videos, I have discussed how to create a Databricks account in a free way, like a community edition, how you can create it up, as well as we have discussed a couple of things as part of this particular series. You can see here, three videos are available. Before going to start this video, just you go through this particular things. And if you are familiar with the SQL, as well as if you are familiar with the PySpark, at least basics, then you can continue with this video. So let's get into this particular things. Today we are going to cover how to select the distinct rows in SQL and how you are going to write the same with the PySpark. So, <laughs> sorry guys. So here select distinct columns from table name. So very straightforward, you are going to use the distinct clause. When it comes to PySpark, how you are going to do that? You are going to select the data, whatever the columns, and then on top of it, you are going to use the distinct method. So at the same time, if you are going with the, if you are going with the set operators in SQL, right? So generally set operators, what are the set operators are there? Union, union all, intersect, as well as minus operator, minus operators are available as part of the traditional SQL. Okay, ANC SQL, which is available. Now, how you are going to perform here, you can see, the what are the rules and rules should be followed whenever you are going to perform the set operators the first first thing is you, it should be number of columns should be same and as well as data type should be same and column position also should be same if you are good with these three things then you will be able to perform the set operators so how can you do the same thing as part of the as part of the pies path i'm going to explain those things so let's get into that particular thing. So here you can see if you prior, prior to this video, if you wanted to follow previous videos, you can go ahead and you can use this. And you need not to pay single penny for Databricks Community Edition. Just I have even clearly mentioned that how you can do that. In the previous class, I have explained how to limit, how to filter, how to do rest of the things. Now let's get back to here. So now how you can whatever i have mentioned right how to select the distinct values from this word sql so you can run this how you can do that select distinct customer id from customers now you can see okay now you can see this is the customer ids overall 12 rows are there there are no duplicates here and at the same time how you can do that so here displays the function which is going to this which is going to display the data so actually so if you wanted to do that, right, let me write it up. I know that I have already prepared this df dot select. Okay. And now here you can use the star or column name, and then you can use the distinct. So while you are doing this, okay, if you do this, okay, it is going to show the result. It is not going to print the result. It is going to just, it is going to give you the out. Okay. Now, if you wanted to see the results in the, screen then you are going to use the display display okay display will give you it is nothing but a print in PySpark. just it's kind of you know print in PySpark. just you can utilize the display method and you can see data is coming here you can see data is coming here now you you will be able to perform that distinct operation now now set operators we have to perform how we can perform the set operators till now i have read the file I have read the CSV file and I'm able to do rest of the operation. Now, I don't want to read the file. I wanted to pass some custom custom data, okay, some custom data and custom schema. I wanted to pass it up and then I wanted to create it up. So here, what I have done, I have given list of tuples, list of tuples, list of tuples I have given. Then on top of it, I'm creating this data. See, this is nothing but inside. I have given two columns. One is ID column, another is name column, name value. Here I'm passing as a value. So consider internally, it considers as a, this as a row and this as a row and this as a row. But I'm passing as a here also another row. Okay, but I'm passing in a tuple, tuple. Okay, so while it is reading, it is going to convert as a each, each tuple as a single row, single row. How many I'm passing? I'm passing multiple rows multiple tuples i'm passing that is the reason i keep i'm enclosed in a i'm enclosed in a list list and here it is a data and i'm passing a custom schema that custom schema is nothing but a id and 
what what kind of value what kind of data type it is it is an integer data type and at the same time i'm passing is a name name is nothing but a varchar to varchar to which we can call it is a string in pyspark okay now we are passing the string data type now i have to create data frame right? to create to create the data frame there is a method create data frame method spark dot create data frame method within this method what you have to pass you have to pass the data and then along with the schema along with the schema so after that i am displaying how the output going to be so let me do that let me do this okay here you can see it is how many rows are there four rows which are available at the same time i am creating a sample df instead of sample df let's create okay df1 okay to make it in a easy way df1 let me rerun this okay here you can see df1 at the same time let's keep it as a df2 df2 here i am creating another data frame with custom data custom data let me go ahead and run it up show results now you can see here in the first data set you are going to have how many rows four rows second data set second data frame what is, how many rows are there three rows are available first data frame you are having four rows second data frame you are having you are having <laughs> you are having three rows now consider it in if you go with the regular sql what you are going to do you are going ahead and you are going to do generally okay you are going to apply the two tables now what we are going to do same thing we are going to apply in same thing we are going to apply in using the data frames how you can perform the set operators so what is the syntax for it very simple okay very simple the how it is going to be let's go ahead and do that so first is df1 dot union union and df2 and df2 what it does it is going to combine the data and it is not it is not going to work like a see prior to two version df dot df1 dot union df2 which means it is going to remove the duplicates and it is going to combine the data combine the data but after two version okay union and union all will work in a same way union and union all will work in a same way let's go ahead and execute it the syntax is very simple df1 df1 union okay df2 df2 so whatever you wanted to combine those data frames you can go ahead and you can do that now now how can we see that whether the num number of columns are same or not how can we see that so let's go ahead and see that okay how can we do that df1 dot print schema okay and df2 dot print schema we have given this we have given this we have given this our own so we know that it is a it is a clearly we know that it is a schema is same okay now we can execute it we can execute it now you can see id name both are same data types okay same data types now you are be able to combine okay union and union all will work in a same way after two version after two version prior to that it is going to work as a normal sql union will remove the duplicates and it is going to give you the unique values but when it comes to after two version spark two version before it was working like a traditional sql after two version it is working as a it is working like a union or you need not to use either you can use union or you can use union or now if you wanted to if you wanted to get only common records between 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 two data frames how you can get it that so very simple whatever you are using right in set operators how you are going to use so here df1 intersect intersect okay and here you can use the df2 df2 so just you can display the output display the output how you can do that display that's it okay now you can see here you can display the output now you can see what are the common records if you can go to here 10 and 20 is the common records 10 and 20 is the common records same 10 and 20 which we got it as part of the output now now sir how can i perform the minus operation as part of the minus operation how can i perform minus operation as part of the pyspark 
there are two ways to do that two ways to do that one is very very important there is no minus operator as part of the sql or there is no minus method as part of the pyspark so what is the what is the name of that particular method so simply df1 dot accept all okay df2 so what it does df1 dot accept accept all df2 what it does it is going to give you the how minus operation works same similar fashion it is going to work it is going to work so it's a nothing but a minus functionality which we can able to do it with using the accept all now try to understand in the first data frame if you go to data frame right first whatever we have created 10 20 is a common and 30 is not 30 30 is not available in the 30 and 30 is not available in the second data frame second data frame that is the reason it is giving 30 30 is the output 30 is 30 is the output now you have given accept all what is the sub subtract okay how this method works what is the difference between subtract and as well as accept all okay this method how it is different compared to compared to accept all so subtract what it does it is going to remove the duplicates now here you see right 30 30 twice it is came okay e, whatever it is going to compare the data frame 1 to data frame 2 and whatever it is available in data frame 1 and which is not available which is not available in data frame 1 data df1 and subtract okay and df2 what it does how it is different from accept all to subtract right so in accept all what it does how many rows which is available see simple very simple which i can say whatever the data which is available in df1 and which is not there in df2 those data from df1 it is going to print that is the reason you see you see here 30 30 and at the same time if you go with the data frame here subtract right what it does if you see any duplicates if you see any duplicate which is not matched with the df2 df1 df1 records which is having a duplicate which is not matched with the df2 it is going to remove the duplicates and it is going to give you the output so here you can see very simple you can see here let me execute then you will understand okay now you can see the output will come as a single row output will come as a single row so this is the way you have to you have to you have to you can write the code in PySpark. okay whatever the sql operations which you are which you are having right those operations how you can convert how you can do this particular operations as part of the PySpark. nowadays why i'm teaching here PySpark, right as part of the etl testing many of the students which they are asking sir can i get into automation can i get into can i get into automation for example suddenly let me give you the scenario whoever the etl testers they are going to convert into big data testers majority of the cases in real time such scenario if you know PySpark, it will give you added advantage whenever you are going to work on right these commands whatever i'm telling you these commands which is going to help you so sometimes you may need to write it up in a not only sql at least you should know how to write the sql as part of the uh, how can you use the sql as part of the PySpark? at the same time how can we write the code in PySpark? how can we write the code in PySpark with the data frame way data frame way that is what i'm teaching and another important thing is suppose if you have a very huge data set and now you need to compare it okay now you need to compare the data how you can do that by using the these methods okay you can create the data whatever it can be file it can be database it can be file to database table to file okay so first try to understand if you have a two tables source is a table target also table now using this spice bar you can connect to this particular databases and you can read the data as a data frame and then finally you can compare using the accept all using the accept all then you will be able to perform your operations day to day operations as part of this so accept all is the one which is going to give you the proper result either you can use accept all or even subtract as well subtract as well so so what i'm trying to say so you have to upskill yourself as part of day to day activities tomorrow you may see more and more opportunities towards the 
this area. Now also we are having more and more opportunities as part of, if you know, Databricks as well as PySpark, then there are enough jobs to, enough jobs to get into IT industry. Please upskill yourself and subscribe the channel. Thank you guys. That's it for the day.